Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of pleuromutilin. This work was published in JAX by Nicholas Foy and Sergei Pronin. Pleuromutilin was first reported in 1951 by Kavanagh et al and was isolated from the fungi of the Cletopelus genus, formerly known as Pleurotus mutilus. This molecule shows potent activity against gram-positive bacteria and does this by acting on the peptidyl transferase centre. This is an uncommon mechanism of action and this minimises the appearance of resistant strains and ensures a lack of cross-resistance with other inhibitors in bacterial protein synthesis. Pleuromutilin is quite an interesting target as it possesses a distinctive 568 fused tricyclic core that contains eight contiguous stereocenters. Three of these stereocenters are quaternary carbons, which are challenging targets for the synthetic chemist. The strategy to construct this molecule will be to use an exoselective Diels Alder reaction to construct the first fused ring system, a hydrogen atom transfer cyclization to construct the six membered ring, and a photo decarboxylation fragmentation reaction to expand the central ring and create the target cyclooctane. So let's start the synthesis with this Diels Alder reaction. This reaction was conducted with methyl aluminium bistriflamide and tips triflate and formed the product in a 41% yield with a 2 to 1 exo to endo ratio. This exo selectivity is uncommon and it has been proposed in other systems that the mechanism isn't the typical concerted Diels Alder addition but instead a stepwise Mukayama Aldal addition followed by an intermolecular Michael addition. Regardless of the precise mechanism, the desired product was formed and the silyl enol group was oxidised to an enone using cerium ammonium nitrate. This enone then took part in a hydrogen atom transfer cyclization. The compound was reacted with iron acac and isopropoxy phenyl silane to promote a radical hydrogen atom transfer to the terminal alkene, producing a secondary radical that then added to the enone. This was further reduced by another equivalent of silane, completing the formation of the six membered ring in a 44% yield with a 20 to 1 DR. The mechanism of this reaction has been elucidated to a very fine level of detail and I highly recommend reading the paper, which I've linked down below. In the next step, the cyclopentanone was protected as a TIPS group, reacting the compound with LDA at minus 78 degrees Celsius, first deprotonates the least directly hindered proton, forming the kinetic enolate, which was then silated by TIPS triflate. Reacting this with PPTS isomerizes the silyl enol ether, forming the thermodynamic product with the more substituted double bond. This allowed the researchers to selectively protect the cyclopentanone in the presence of the cyclohexanone and formed the target in an 89% yield over two steps. Taking this compound forward, it was once again reacted with LDA, forming an enolate that then attacked a trimethylcell ethoxycyanoformate compound. This forms a tetrahedral intermediate that then eliminates an equivalent of cyanide to form the target ester. This reagent is similar to Mander's reagent, which is used to install methyl esters. In the next reaction, the proton, after to both the ketone and the ester, was deprotonated and reacted with 1-iodobut-2-ine, forming a quaternary carbon centre in a 57% yield. The enolate formed is planar, and the propargyl group selectively adds to the less sterically hindered top face of the molecule. With this alkyne in place, it could then take part in a reductive cyclization. Titanium isopropoxide is first reacted with isopropyl magnesium chloride, to form a titanium coordinated propene species, known as Sato's reagent. This undergoes ligand exchange with the alkyne and forms a pi bonded titanium intermediate that can add to the carbonyl, forming a cyclobutanol upon aqueous workup and hydrolysis of the titanium complex. In the next step, this cyclobutanol took part in a retroaldol reaction. The cyclobutanol was deprotonated with KHMDS, forming a ketone upon the fragmentation of the cyclobutane ring together with ketene acetal that was trapped with test chloride. This reaction required precisely one equivalent of base to be added, so 9-methylfluorine was added to the reaction which served as an indicator, forming a persistent pink colour once the equivalence point was reached. Lithium tetramethylpyridine was then added to this reaction mixture, promoting a bayless hillman reaction, where the TMP undergoes a Michael addition to the enone, forming an enolate that then attacked iodomethane. Elimination of the TMP group forms an exoalkene, completing the synthetic sequence in an 86% yield with a greater than 20 to 1 DR. 
Taking this forward, the compound was reacted with TBAF to remove the silyl groups. The enolate, formed on the 5 membered ring, added to hexachloroethane, while the enolate, formed from the ketene acetal, underwent a Mokayama type aldol addition into the ketone to reform the cyclobutanol ring. This product was isolated in a 68% yield. The carboxylic acid, formed from the deprotection of the ketene acetal, was crucial for the next step, which was a photodecarboxylation fragmentation sequence. In this reaction, an iridium catalyst is first irradiated with UV light, forming an excited iridium-3 complex that can promote a one electron oxidation of the carboxylic acid. This triggers the homolysis of the carbon-carbon bond and the elimination of carbon dioxide together with a proton, generating a tertiary radical on the substrate. This iridium-2 catalyst is then oxidized back to the iridium-3 species. This reaction mechanism has not been fully elucidated, but it is plausible that this is carried out by oxygen as the reaction is carried out under aerobic conditions. The tertiary radical formed on the substrate by the decarboxylation is then trapped either by oxygen or by tempo which was a necessary addition to the reaction and has previously been reported to trap radicals formed by photodecarboxylation. The authors propose that the trapped intermediate undergoes a grab fragmentation forming the diketone and opening the cyclobutane ring resulting in the formation of the target cyclooctane core. The mechanism of this reaction has not been proven, so do feel free to suggest other mechanisms which might be more plausible. The next step of the synthesis was a Kornblum oxidation. This Kornblum oxidation is a little unusual as it does not proceed with the typical regiochemistry. In this reaction, the cyclopentanone is first deprotonated, forming an enolate, and the chloride and the other alpha carbon is then eliminated. This forms a resonance stabilized oxyallyl cation similar to those commonly seen in Favorsky rearrangements. This cation is then attacked by DMSO on the less sterically hindered side. The proton at this position can then be abstracted by calcium fluoride, forming a ketone in a 69% yield upon the elimination of dimethyl sulfide. Installation of this ketone allowed for a carbonyl transposition. Reacting the compound with zinc in acetic acid reduced this new ketone in a 91% yield allowing the enol to tautimerize and reform the cyclopentanone. This process of installing the chloride, oxidatively eliminating it and then reducing the compound was crucial for the control of the stereochemistry at the bridgehead position. This compound was then further reduced using sodium and ethanol. This selectively reduced the two ketones present in the cyclooctane ring. However, the reaction was low yielding and mostly starting material was recovered. This process was therefore repeated three times after which the researchers could recover 3 mg of their target compound. This was enough material to complete the final step, which was an esterification using EDC. EDC is first protonated by the acid, which then attacks as a nucleophile, forming an activated ester. This is then attacked by DMAP, eliminating a urea byproduct and forming an even more activated species. A hydroxyl group on the substrate then attacks this activated reagent to form the ester. The terminal acetate group was then hydrolyzed using potassium carbonate and methanol to complete the synthesis of plurimutylin in a 68% yield. Well I hope you enjoyed the synthesis. Join me in the next video where we look at the synthesis of cephalotane type nordy terpenoids.